To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of God has struck with power. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please sing after me. A hallelujah. A hallelujah. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala 
came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. And so she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. He saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Way, way back, some of you weren't even born yet, way, way back in the school year of 1976, 1977, at Coyle and Cassidy High School in the corner of Adams and Hamilton Street in Taunton, or as my mother would say, Taunton. It was my senior year in high school, and I was introduced in room 108, I think Bob, 108. I was introduced to the challenging poetry of Gerard Manley Hopkins by one of my favorite <coughs> teachers, Holy Union sister, Vera Hebert. There was a character, to say the least. She dressed up as Alice in Wonderland to teach us the story, okay? She danced on desks and didn't fall. That's the main thing. But she was a character. And she loved Gerard Manley Hopkins and his way of words. Hopkins was a Victorian poet. Now, remember the Victorian times? You know, PBS has all those stories about Victorian times, but uh, very staid and very rigid. That wasn't Gerard Manley Hopkins. His family was high Anglican. They almost disowned him when he became a Catholic. And then, on top of that, he entered the Jesuits and became a priest. When he lived on this earth, his talent was never recognized. It's only after his death that his poetic work was discovered. And it is held in high esteem now by scholars throughout the world as some of the best examples of English poetry. He has a whole collection of works. And surprisingly, one of the works we did not study is one of his most famous. It's called The Wreck of the Deutschland. Now remember, in Victorian times, um, they, they had this great um, devotion, I don't know, but to, to memorialize events. And the Deutschland was a ship that sunk off the coast of England. And in the shipwreck, five German Franciscan nuns perished. They were heading to the United States to be missionaries. 
And Gerard Manley Hopkins memorialized these five women whom he had never met. And towards the end of this lengthy poem, the third line from the end, he offers this line, talking about resurrection and the goal that the sisters had worked towards. Let him Easter in us. He takes a noun and makes it a verb. Let him Easter in us. How does Christ Easter in us? can tell it's written on your faces. You all want to know, right? <laughs> First, in faith. Now, this kind of faith is a gift. It doesn't rely only on empirical or scientific evidence. It doesn't have to. This Easter faith is a leap. It, it's something I know not only here, but here, and here. If I leap, if I step out in trust, I have that knowledge, the knowledge of the heart. Yes, let Christ Easter in us. How does Christ Easter in us? By hope. And, and Christian hope is not wishful thinking. Christian hope is very clear. It's precise. It's unwavering. <coughs> Christ Easter's in us be, because we trust that whatever happens, God still cares for us. Whatever happens, God is always going to be there for us. That hope, that trust, is Jesus' resurrection gift. Begun in baptismal water, fed in Eucharist, his body and blood, recovered in reconciliation. Yes, let Christ Easter in us. How does Christ Easter in us, you ask? By love. Remember St. Paul's challenge. If I have faith so as to move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. I can trust confidently that God will take care of me. But without love, that confidence is not Christian hope. It's pagan presumption. Without love, faith is dead. And hope is arrogance. And this love is not just the big stuff. Rather, it's just the opposite. This kind of love is done one step at a time, with one person at a time. And those people are all around us. They're even closer than we realize. Sometimes they're sitting right next to us or lying wounded where we pass, mutely pleading for bread or for a kind word, for justice or just a simple smile. Some small sign that you and I care. Yes. Let Christ Easter in us. 
we can be assured of one thing. Rarely in our lives will we experience such profound joy that when through you and through me, through our faith, our hope, our love, a smile is born on a crucified face. And then, Christ will Easter in you, in me, as never, ever before. For through you and me, Jesus Christ Easter's in another. So, my friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, that we may walk with Him in newness of life. Now that our Lent is concluded, let us renew the promises of our baptism, by which we renounce Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. Now remember, friends, this is Easter Sunday, okay? We can't mumble our way through this, okay? This is really the, the core, all right? So, friends, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, who rose from the dead, and is now seated at God's right hand? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sin, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Now please remain standing, and I'm warning you will get wet. <laughs>
that sweet revenge I have soaked myself. <laughs> but I want you to know that as much as I enjoy doing that, Father Ken likes it even more. <laughs> so when he's celebrant, beware. <laughs> Jesus Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is truly risen. Hallelujah. So with faith and trust in the risen Lord, we offer these petitions. For the church, local and universal, that we may be renewed with God's grace on this most blessed of days, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been newly initiated in the church, that God will bless them with wisdom and peace on this day and every day of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live under the shadow of war, violence, or oppression, that they may experience life, peace, and freedom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, the lonely, and the forgotten, that they may know the joy of Easter through our prayer, witness, and loving support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially our deceased family members and parishioners, that they may share in the resurrection of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Glorious God, your love endures forever. Raise us in joy with Jesus, your Son, so that we may proclaim the good news of Easter through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, friends, traditionally in the Diocese of Fall River, there are two collections on Easter Sunday. The first collection remains here in our parish community, and I really want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to the wonderful support you give financially and prayerfully, uh, not only today, but throughout the whole year. Thank you so much. The second collection in our diocese is for the needs of our retired priests. And as I approach really fast, <laughs> seven more years, that retirement goal, I want to thank you on behalf of our retired priests for your support. So thank you again, and let us be seated. We are born from the darkness and cold in the light. We are bathed in the glory of God. Friends, pray my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. <laughs> Exultant with paschal glad gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, he has restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all goodness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, St. Patrick, St. Louis de France, St. Thomas More, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and to ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Here we stand before Christ, we share his Easter peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Our communion hymn is number 310, Table of Plenty, number 310. Peace 
Thank you so much for sharing our prayer and for being here uh, and enjoying this, beginning this beautiful day with us. Uh, again, a very special thanks for talking about the last minute having to jump in. Jonathan, thank you so, so much. For We, have, we still have a number of people who are shut-ins and who watch us every week on our, our website. And it's because of uh, Caesar's wonderful talent and his sharing. Um, they're in a band together, if you don't know that. And they had a gig last night. Holy, I know, Holy Saturday, I know, we didn't know about that. Anyway. <laughs> it happens. I mean, being out all night working and then um, coming this one. Thank you, Caesar, for it. To all those who in any way continue to share their gifts and talents to build up our community. Thank you. Our leftist and Eucharistic ministers, our wonderful altar service right around the corner. And, and they're not people funny quickly somewhere in the back here, but he's doing the 10 o'clock. But I just want to uh, again publicly thank. Um, we are so blessed. Oh, I don't know where I would be or we would be without the wonderful generosity of my friends, our friends, uh, Father Ken, Father Gabriel, Father Jim Quigley, and Father Jim Butler. I, we're lucky to say that we have this many priests in our little town, you know. Um, they, are, they are so wonderful. Last night, Father Ken preached, and he's been kind of busy with this thing called March Madness, you know. <laughs> and um, he preached about, now, I almost said this last night, Kath, too. Um, Ken, before he became president, never went to the games. <laughs> and, and he'd, he'd stay home and watch them on TV, you know? And, and he has wonderful gifts and talents. He's an awesome chef. Oh my gosh, he's an awesome chef. And he knows his 60s music. Like, oh my gosh, he's one. He was a DJ, you know? Um, and, and, and it's on a job. But um, he's got the basketball uh, bug, you know? And you should have heard him talking last night about, oh, this basketball stuff. I'm saying, where did he get this? This is something new. But he talked about his theme was we won. We won. That was the theme you heard on campus. We won. And he tied that into resurrection. Oh, it was powerful. They clapped for him at the end of the hobby. And he got a round of applause, huh? And if they could have stood, they would have stood. I mean, it was really it was wonderful. He was an awesome job last night. Really, really good. So, just say a little prayer of thanks for our wonderful Dominican friends and Father Jim Butler, too, who helps in his retirement. And there's only two other people left Deacon Bob, who's with his family this morning at the 9 o'clock Mass. He's, he's warned Father Gabriel already, they're all coming. Okay? <laughs> and of course, Sister Kathy. All the beauty around the house. Give a special shout out to Sister Kathy this year. You know, if you don't know, Sister is the president of the corporation for the Holy Union Sisters. Um, the, the sisters elected her to leadership. They had a nerve. That's all I want to say. They had a nerve. Okay? <laughs> because she can't be here full time. And so in addition to all the work, I call it her nun work, all the work that she does with the sisters, Kathy also serves in our three parishes. And all this stuff, all the beautiful flowers and all that stuff, along with Bill and Tony, uh, much of this is because of Sister Kathy. And we work together and we put it all together. And yeah, talk about being married. <laughs> you know, people questioned, you know, if, if, you know, if we were married at one time, you know. When <laughs> first, we first got here, they said, imagine. Not living in the rectory with him. Okay, no, we don't live together. <laughs> no way. Okay. But doing the flowers together, you'd think we were married. So <laughs> that's the way we argue. <laughs> it's funny. She, one of the things is, don't touch it. <laughs> that comes from her many times. But, but I've learned, I've learned, trust, trust. 
she knows what she's talking about. Right? It took me 34 years, but I've learned. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. So, that's my thank yous. I'm going to go play the Easter Bunny now. We have an Easter egg hunt for all of our children after the 9 o'clock mass. Yeah. I don't know what I was smoking when I planned that. But that's okay. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May our Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, this is one of my favorite things to do at Easter. The Mass is ended, go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia. Here we go. Alleluia. Boy, are you good for 8 o'clock in the morning. It's a hymn that is number 169. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's number 169. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no, he's 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 really good. Yeah, he's.